Top ten. Let's do this top ten. Good. Now you've got. Uh, we're we're going from ten to one. You said you had fifteen teams. Well, I so, just I I just did a top fifteen because I've got some teams that I think deserve to be in that conversation of man. They could be in the top ten. The difference between the the bottom five and the last five out of mine are pretty close. All right. Well, give give me your fifteen through eleven, and then we'll both start together on ten. My 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 last five teams that didn't make my top ten are all kind of jumbled together. It's A and M, Florida, Kentucky, Oregon, and NC State. Do you kind of agree with that? Or I do agree with that. In your top ten, I I don't have any of those in my top ten. Okay, but they're but they're like I can't tell you that my nine and ten are better than any of those teams. I now I'm after I get to nine, my eight through up, I think is a big difference. Yeah. I, I I agree. I, I well, I think I agree. Uh, let's go with number ten. Uh, All right, <laughs> that's I got the dog here. <laughs> uh, let's see, number ten. I've got UCF at ten. I moved them down a spot. Um, I think that the blueprint is there to beat them. I don't know that anybody left on the schedule can. We we, uh, we maybe disagree. South Florida, maybe Cincinnati. We just disagree with this completely. We're we're so far off the map on this. It's not even close. It's, I think I mean before the Memphis game they had not played anybody this year, and you know like I think that you you get a competent team and you can beat this team. I don't know. This is this is the best game Memphis could play at home with all of their fans, and this team still found a way to fight, claw with their fingernails, and to discredit them and to hurt them because of that is just wrong. It's just wrong. They're an undefeated yeah. team, and they haven't been beat for two years. So, just flat wrong. My number 10 team is Texas. Okay. I like Texas. I think Texas has one really bad, ugly loss before the season, you know, right at the beginning. And I don't know that they've righted the ship to be a playoff team, but I, it wouldn't shock me if they win the Big 12. I think they're a good team, and they're playing their best football right now. I, okay, I'm with you on that. Uh, and Texas is up, up in mind, but we'll get to them eventually. Number nine, I've got Oregon. Okay, so Oregon was one of my bottom five out, and you got them in the top ten. Oh, were they? I didn't even hear you say Oregon. A&M, Florida, UK, Kentucky, Oregon, NC State. Those are oh, the there five. We go. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Oregon, yeah, Oregon's number nine for me. Okay. So, uh, who, who do you have nine? Nine is Oklahoma. I, they didn't Oklahoma. play, but they, they've they played some games and they look like world beaters, and they played some games that look like they could have lost. And, and they did lose to, to Texas in a neutral site field. I think they're good. I think they're still in the top, top ten, but I don't have them any higher than nine. Okay. I can I can understand that. Uh, number eight, I've got Oklahoma. <laughs> okay. All right. So they're, they're right for those there. exact reasons that you were just talking about. Um, I felt weird having Texas below them since Texas beat them, but a loss to Maryland is just way different than a loss to to your rival. That's that, the that's my reason for that. I think a loss in the first game of the season, when you're still trying to get things figured out, is a lot different than a loss in the middle of the season, uh, because I think it shows which way you're trending. It uh, to me. Okay. So uh, who's uh, who? You got at eight? Number eight, Georgia. Georgia. Okay. I think Georgia hasn't played anybody. They finally played one really tough team, and that team beat their ass. And they beat them at every aspect of the game. Special teams, offense, defense, both lines of scrimmage, coaching matchup, wasn't even close. I got to drop them, and I got to drop them a long way. Because – I dropped Georgia all the way down to 11. Oh, they're, all, they're out of your top ten. No, I can't, top 10. I can't in good conscience do that because – I, I think LSU is a really good football team, and if that's your only loss, then that's that's pretty tough to knock them out of the top ten. I don't, I don't know that this is going to be Georgia's only loss. Oh, uh, Nick, you uh, might be right. I'm, I, so we do top tens different then. I, I only do my top ten based off of what I see. I can't predict the future, man. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. Like this is this is what I see. Georgia has not played anybody, and they've really been in some games that they shouldn't have been. It obviously they're not as as physical as they have been. Jake Fromm looks he, he's flustered against uh, uh, against you know LSU, but he he could have been flustered against South Carolina as well. Um, he 
like I, I don't know that he is the answer. Um, I, I, I look, now I'm just a guy that watches football, and I don't like Georgia very much at all. I've grown up just not liking them. That's fine. I would love to see what that offense would look like if they handed the ball to Holyfield 30 times a game because I think he's the only guy in the Heisman Trophy race close to Tua if he touches the ball 30 times a game. You might be right. I think that guy is an absolute freak. Now, I would also like to see him PP in a cup and have that tested for things that are illegal in sports, but but that's different. He He hasn't been asked to, and he probably won't, thanks to the SEC and the NCAA just not caring about stuff like that. And so <laughs> I think that I don't think nobody can stop him, but for some reason the other running backs touch it 10 times, 12 times. He touches it five. I just yeah, think it's, it's, uh, it's definitely strange. You, you got that right. Uh, number seven for me, is that where we are? Am I on seven? We're at now? seven. Number seven for me, I've got Texas. So okay. So one, got- one above oh, Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I like uh, I like Texas here. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's I, I love having Texas back in the conversation, right? Like it's I'm, it's great. It, so long so long as Sam Ellinger is okay, because I, obviously he went out against Baylor. They didn't look great against Baylor, but that's part of the growing up process, right? Like, I don't you, think close losses should hurt people, especially when they're on the road, man. That you just you're gonna be in games like that. And the difference between good teams and not good teams is you find ways to win those games. I don't like penalizing schools for close losses. I just don't. Agreed. Agreed. Especially after the Oklahoma game where you you win and you're back on the map and everybody is talking about you. uh, And then you lose your starting quarterback early. That's right. And Shane Bichelle comes in and and just steadies the ship. Right? So that's that's the one thing about uh, about losing – you know, recruits to transfer, like quarterbacks to transfer. Like, when you get one that goes out and you don't have anybody behind them, you're in a lot of trouble. I mean, we saw that with Nebraska, right? So, like, I don't know. I've got a – so, I've got Texas at seven. Um, My number seven? Yep. My my Tigers, LSU. I want it so bad to put them higher. I just couldn't. I think think this is – Couldn't put them higher. Huh? You couldn't put them higher. It, my logic and reason is this. I think they have the best win of the entire country all across the board. There is not a single team that has a win as big as that one was. The team that I have above them, I'll go ahead and give my number six, is the reason I got them up there. Is Michigan has the second best win. They also have another uh, – not the second best win. That Michigan has the best loss. Michigan only has one loss, and it was at a team that we both have in our playoffs and a team that we think is going to go undefeated in Notre Dame, I, I got to put Michigan above LSU right now just because their their one loss is more justifiable than LSU's. They had Florida beat. They could have won that game if, if Burrow doesn't doesn't throw the, the, the last pick six to just put the nail in the coffin. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they would have driven. Had he not thrown the pick six, I think he would have uh, yep. driven down the field. They would have kicked the field goal and won the game. They kicked the field goal and won the game. Hey, let me ask you this about my Tigers. One more thing about LSU. Okay. Okay. Tracy, right now, as a kicker, we have seen kickers cost their team games. That guy could – he's like – he could kick for 23 NFL teams today, right? We agree with that? I agree with that, yeah. I mean, kicking is so bad in college football and in the pros. This kid is incredible. Yeah, he – yes, I will agree with that. Uh. I'm an Alabama fan, obviously. I wish that Y'all we had. had... <laughs> yes, I really do. I mean, well, here, I would trade you Tracy for two of right now. You don't have to ever worry about the field goal game the rest of the year. No, I'm good on that because our defense okay. is okay. good this year. <laughs> just check. We, we need them you points. don't want to make that deal. All right. That's a, yeah. We we need uh, we need more points than just field goals this year. Uh, number six, I've got a uh, got your LSU Tigers. Okay, so yeah, yeah I just, for, for all those reasons, um, I'm going to tell you this: that number, I got Michigan number five. Okay, and so I, right. I think Michigan is playing absolute lights out right now. Um, they they look like a different team than they did when when they started the season. Um, you know, and we'll see what happens. Obviously, they got some big games coming up against uh, Michigan State and Penn State before they hit Ohio State at the end of the year. But uh, but I mean, I I think I've got them winning both of those games. Like I we, we said. Two and one would be a success, right? 
yeah. from Michigan. Um, you know, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens, but I, I think three and oh, it's it's three and oh or bust right here. Yeah. So my my number five team is Idol Clemson. So okay, they're they're still undefeated. They haven't impressed me at all with a single win, but they are still undefeated, and I guess they're doing what they're supposed to do to win games. So I got them at five, and we'll see if they if they beat North Carolina State, then you know maybe they'll move up a little bit. Maybe they won't. I don't know. It, dep- it depends on how they uh, how they win the game, right? That's right. Uh, I've got Clemson for for those exact reasons. Uh, Clemson has done what they need to do. Uh, I think that they understand that. Look, just win and you're in. And that's all you got to do. I don't yep. think Dabo is worried about impressing anybody anymore. Like, I mean, this is four straight years of this. So, and it, Alabama kind of used to do the same thing, right? Like where you just win with your defense, do what you got to do. It doesn't matter if you win by one or, or 50, just just keep winning. That's right. See, this is where we're, we're off by one for all of these. But it, this is where it comes in. Is I've got UCF number four. I, I knew that was coming. I, I think they deserve to be in this conversation. They've done it for two years straight. They lost a ton of players to the NFL. They lost their head coach, and they haven't lost a step. They played everybody that's on their schedule. Anybody that's willing to play them, they'll go play you. They'll go to your house, and they're beating you up. Last week, they got this week, yesterday, they got down. They faced some unbelievable adversity, and they found a way to fight claw with their fingernails, do everything they can to get back in that game. They did it. They won the game. I don't know what else you want from them. What are they supposed to do to get in this conversation, to get from 10 to the top four or five for you? What are they supposed to do? I mean, I don't know that there's anything that they can do. Then, 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 then the, once again, we have another thing that makes this whole thing broken. I love college football because I like the games. But outside of an individual game on a Saturday in a box, this whole sport means nothing. If you can go two years undefeated and it not matter at all. It's all bullshit. It's Let's see, that's that's the thing. I think it does matter. It just depends on what your expectations are. It just doesn't. It just like if you're a group of five team, your expectation should never be the college football playoff. Like the there are two separate. But the fact that we that have this group of five conversation is wrong. The AAC is better than the Big Twelve, the Pac Twelve, and the ACC this year. They're better than them. But are, Cincinnati are they is better. Though? Yes, Cincinnati is better than half the teams in the Big Twelve. UCF, Central Florida, and Memphis are better than half the teams in the Pac in the Big Twelve. But if Oklahoma would have went undefeated, we'd put their ass in there. I mean, you're probably right, but it, there's like, no doubt. I'm not. I, I'm, there's no question. I'm right on that. No, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah you are 100 percent right. If Oklahoma went undefeated, then yes, absolutely. And, and there's no doubt on a neutral site field, half of the Big 12 and probably some of the upper half of the Big 12 would be dogs in a, in a game against Memphis, UCF, Central Florida right now. Yeah, okay, you might be right about that. And Houston and Cincinnati, no slouches. No, no, they're definitely not. And nobody's Houston putting those good. teams on their schedule. Mississippi State Houston, had Memphis on their schedule, and all of a sudden said, whoa, hey, let's, let's back out of this. Let's go, let's, let's go let's pick up about some this. bum. <laughs> That's the problem, is you can't play anybody because everybody's now afraid to play you. They're yeah. scared of them. They're running for the hills. And so we punish them because their strength of schedule is not good. Okay. They're better than half the teams in the SEC, too, by the way. Yeah. No, you, when, well, when Memphis goes into Missouri and hangs with Missouri every step of the way next week, you're going to realize they belong. They absolutely okay. belong. Could they hang with Georgia, Florida, LSU, and Bama? No. But, but we're not asking them to. If you win the Pac-12, you win the Big 12, you, you win, you know, the Big 10 or something, these other conferences that are down, you get a seat at the table. Those conferences are not better than the AAC. They're just this, not. This year they may not get a seat at the table. I think the playoff is is in complete disarray right now, uh, but we'll get to that in our playoff predictions. Um, let's. Uh, let's our top three about... are the same. Our top three are the same. That's what I was going to say. Notre Dame, uh, Ohio State, Bama. 
Right. That's exactly we're, what I got. And we're not changing that until one of those teams lose. Pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, it, it, you you could maybe if Notre Dame just goes on a streak of beating people by four touchdowns and Ohio could they State. Beat Ohio State. Oh yeah, they could. I think they could jump in seeding. Yeah. I, yeah. Would, but no, Ohio it, State. It, by the way, let's let's talk about yesterday. Ohio State is down like fourteen to ten to Minnesota. They come back, they win thirty to fourteen. They didn't look real good. Anything We're going to talk about that when we get to – so our top ten I do based off of only what I've seen, not predicting the future. Okay. When we get to, when we get to our playoff prediction, which is next, that I'm trying to predict the future, that's different. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. All right, All right. you want to go on and jump into that? Let's do that right now. <laughs> 